Welcome to Darasa, where learning is made easy. My name is Purity Anzelimo, and our topic today is pressure, a topic in Form 1. Now, we are going to look at, to start with, pressure in solids. Pressure in solids. And by the end of the lesson, you should be in a position to, number one, define pressure. And number two, state the factors that affect pressure in solids. Now, before we define pressure, I want you to take the following examples. These are examples that you have en encountered in your everyday life. Now, I want you to consider two ladies. One lady on a high-heeled shoe, a very high-heeled shoe, and another lady who is in a flat shoe. And these two ladies are walking on a muddy road. There are two, they are walking on a muddy road. Now, I want you to tell me, you can also see here, we have the high heel and we have the one that is flat. Now, you can tell me who is likely to get stuck more in the mud than the other. Now, the one who is wearing the high heel shoe is getting stuck more. There is a lot of penetration to the ground, unlike the one who is in a flat shoe. Now, this penetration to the ground or this penetration effect to the ground is what we are calling pressure. Now, if you look at the one in high heel shoe, you can see that the surface area of that shoe, that base area or the area in contact to the road is very small. Whereas for a flat shoe, the area is big, meaning that the smaller, the smaller the cross-section area or the smaller the area in contact, the more the penetration. And now this penetration is actually what we are referring to as pressure. Now again, before we define pressure, I want you to consider this scenario whereby we are having a soft bond. And now we have a person who has a pin, a very sharp pin, and another one having a blunt object, a very blunt object, meaning that the base area is very big compared to the pin. And both of them are forcing the pin. They are applying the same force. Note, the force being applied is the same, and they are trying to push the pin and this blunt object into the soft bond, which is likely, or which one is going to penetrate through the soft bond faster. Now, the one who is using this pin or the needle is going to penetrate faster than the blunt object. Now, what does this mean? The sharp pin has a very small cross-section area and therefore the high, there is high penetration into the soft bond. Now, for there to be pressure, we are considering we have the cross-section area and we are saying that the more the cross-section area, the lesser the penetration. And the smaller the cross-section area, the more the penetration effect. Now, we are also considering in this case that we are applying some force. In the first example, the lady exerts some weight on the shoe. On the second one, we have the person applying some force on those two objects. And therefore, we are having the force and we are having the cross-section area. Now, let's come to the definition of pressure, whereby we are going to relate this force and the area. We define pressure as the force acting normally or perpendicularly per unit area. Pressure is the force acting normally or perpendicularly per unit area. That is what we are referring to as pressure. And therefore we can say pressure is given by force divided by area. Pressure is given by force divided by area. Now, this force, whenever you are calculating pressure, it is advisable that you convert the force in its SI unit. What is the SI unit of force? Newton. 
So we have force in newtons divided by area and the SI unit of area is square meters. And therefore from this definition we can be able to get the SI unit of pressure. Now we have newtons as the numerator for force which is our numerator divided by the cross section area or the area in contact and we have it as in meters. Therefore, the SI unit of pressure is newtons per square meters. You can write it as this, newtons per square meters or simply newtons per square meters. They all mean the same. Now, one newton per square meter is equivalent to one pascal. One pascal is an equivalent of one newton per square meters, meaning that we can also say pascal is another unit for pressure. So the SI unit of pressure, you can express it in newtons per square meters or in pascals because the two are the same. Now, that's how we calculate pressure. Now, I want you to note very well that pressure and area are universally proportional. And this explains why the trucks which carry very heavy loans, as you can see here, a truck carrying very many uh, luggage and very heavy ones, you can see that it has so many wheels and they are very broad. The reason as to why there are many and brown is to increase the surface area or to increase their area of contact and when they increase the area, the pressure decreases. Meaning that even as they travel on roads, they are not going to damage more uh, as compared to when their wheels or their tires were very small. So that's the reason as to why those trucks which carry heavy loads are designed to have very huge wheels and also very many to increase the area of contact. Now, the two factors here which are affecting pressure in solids are number one, we've talked of the cross section area or what we are calling the area of contact. Area of contact. The smaller the area, the more the pressure, and vice versa. And number two, the other factor which affects pressure in solids is the amount of force applied. If you apply more force on this needle, it's going to penetrate more, unlike when you apply a little force. So again, we can say therefore that pressure and force are directly proportional. So pressure is force acting normally per unit area. The SI unit is newtons per square meters or pascal. Now, during the next lesson, we'll now go into calculations. How can we calculate pressure? How can we calculate the force? And how do we calculate the area of contact? Thank you for following. My name is Teacher Purity Anzelimo.